The topic of this video is solving radical equations. Let's present a solution to the problem you just solved. Okay, so let's go through the steps. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this term and move it to the right hand side. So I get the principal square root of the sum 3x plus 1 equals 2 plus the principal square root of the difference x minus 1. Since this radical is isolated and has an index of 2, I raise the entire right side and the entire left side to the second power. On the left side, the 2, the square, and the square root cancel, leaving me 3x plus 1. On the right side, I have to use FOIL. I have 2 plus radical times another 2 plus radical. Both of those radicals contain an x minus 1 beneath. All right, so I'm going to spend a little time on the right-hand side here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times the radical would be plus 2 radical. The radical times 2 would also be plus 2 radical. And the radical times itself could be written as that. All right, so now we're going to do a little radical algebra. Combining the two like radicals together by adding their coefficients, we get 4 plus 4 radical x minus 1, plus square and square root cancel, leaving me x minus 1. Combining like terms, the 4 and the minus 1, so I get 3x plus 1 equals 4 minus 1 is 3, plus x, plus 4 radical x minus 1. Okay, I still have a radical in my equation, so I need to isolate it, and to do that I have to get rid of both of these. So minus 3, minus 3, minus x, minus x. And we have 3x minus x is 2x. Plus 1 minus 3 is minus 2 equals cancel, cancel. 4 square root of x minus 1. Okay, so this is considered isolated because it has no adding or subtracting before or after it. One multiplying value is okay. So we're going to raise both sides to the power that matches the index of the isolated radical. This is a square root. All right, so on the left, we're going to use FOIL. 2x minus 2 times another 2x minus 2. On the right, we're going to recognize that this is the base for radical x minus 1 times itself. All right, using FOIL on the left, we get 4x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 4 equals, on the right, the outside numbers multiply, which is 16, and the radicals multiply. So we'll have a square root of x minus 1 squared. The square and the square root cancel, leaving an x minus 1 in parentheses. Combining like terms, 4x squared minus 8x plus 4. Distribute on the right. 4x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 16x minus 16. This is a quadratic equation. We have several options for how to solve it. Let's get our equal 0, just like we did in the previous videos minus 16x, minus 16x, plus 16, plus 16. So we get 4x squared, minus 24x, plus 20, equals 0. All right, we'll start a new column. 4x squared, minus 24x, plus 20, equals 0. We're going to solve this by factoring, just as we have in the previous videos. The first step of factoring is to put your terms in descending order, which we have done. The second step of factoring is to identify and factor out your GCF, which is 4. So let's take out that 4. Divide each term by 4. You get x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. Now we can factor this trinomial. The leading coefficient is 1. So that means this is a very simple trinomial. We just need to come up with two numbers that multiply to make 5, but add to make negative 6. Those are negative 5 and negative 1, and then x goes in front of each value. Now use your zero product property and set each factor equal to 0. 
we get 4 equals 0, which has no solution. There is no value of x that will make 4 equal to 0. Adding 5 on both sides, we get x equals 5. Adding 1 on both sides, we get x equals 1. These are the two possible solutions to our problem, but we have to check both because either one of them could be an extraneous solution. All right, so back we go to the beginning. Okay, we're going to replace the x in our original equation with each one of our potential solution values. So the first thing we're going to check is 5. So everywhere we see an x, we're going to put 5. And we'll simplify. All right, here we go. 3 times 5 is 15. Fifteen plus one is sixteen. Five minus one is four. The square root of sixteen is four. The square root of four is two. Four minus two is two. And those numbers match. So that tells me that five is an acceptable solution. All right, now we have to check one. So everywhere we see an x in our original equation, we're going to put 1, and we will simplify. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 1 minus 1 is 0, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 0 is 0, 2 minus 0 is 2, so we get 2 equals 2. And it appears that for this problem, there are two correct answers, x equals 1 and x equals 5. You never know exactly how many answers you're going to get to a problem like this one, so you always have to check every one of them.